So Shirshasana in the Ashtanga Yoga practice, basically headstand, I'm going to do the sequence traditional approach with the Kant and the Drishti, and then we're gonna break it down into parts. So from downward dog, you just drop your knees down, and you prep for a headstand, Shirshasana. Sara Drishti towards the tip of the nose. Ashta, you rise up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now, exhale, Ardha Shirshasana, halfway down. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Dash our back up. Now uh, up. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring the head back down and slowly. <laughs> Child's pose. before we do the seated meditation. <laughs> and now let's look into parts of the headstand, Shirshasana. So some teach just the regular headstand and then bringing the legs halfway. And then some traditionally I learned it with the third part where you saw me lifting the head off the ground and rising up. I'll break all of them down. So let's start in the first round with the hand positions. You usually want to bring the elbows right under the shoulders. You can interlace the fingers together from here and keep the shoulders. Often you will notice that they want to spill wide open. The wider you go, the more you're actually trying to balance on a straight line. And that makes it harder because you'll notice in second series, in the Ashtanga Yoga, there's a lot of different variation headstands with arms open out to the side, with arms extended forward, with touching the shoulders. Those are all more advanced approaches to a headstand. So do stick to the fact that you don't want to get the elbows go too wide open out to the side. And what as well helps in here, you have a strap to use it because that can be really helpful to loop the elbows together. That way they're not spilling out to the sides. So let's do here. Just like the other approach, you want to have it 
shoulder width apart then bring the elbows in the arms and keep the strap on top of the elbows then from here as you interlace the fingers together you'll notice your elbows can't spill out to the side they'll definitely have to stay here now the first step and I highly suggest if you've never done a headstand before, do it without putting the head on the ground at all. That way you're really strengthening the arms and building the strength required to hold you in the headstand. Because there is only about 30% of the weight in your head. 70% of the weight is in your arms. And ideally, what you saw me doing in the final variation, lifting the head off the ground, there is absolutely no weight on your head. So yes, for the beginning, think about it's only 30%, but you're still trying to work, pressing the forearm so much into the ground that you're almost trying to lift the crown of the head off the ground. You almost can slide the little paper under. Come on, I think you're gonna do this one. Go. So start here with the strap if you need to, especially if you feel like the elbows are spilling out to the side. Interlace the fingers together. Now, some teach it to open the palms and push the back of the head into the palms. I wouldn't suggest exactly doing that. I would say, imagine you have a little egg, something fragile in here. You don't wanna squeeze the palms, the fist all the way together, but you don't wanna widen it open either. So have it a little active, as if you have a little bowl in here. You don't wanna smoosh the egg, but at the same time, you don't wanna completely open it. And you don't wanna push the back of the head too much into the arms. For the beginning, it helps. So let's start. First thing, a lot of time people put the forehead down. If you're putting the forehead, let me demonstrate that closer here. If you put the forehead in here, that's not the crown of the head, and you start to go up, you're immediately putting way too much pressure into the back of the neck. So you wanna put the crown of the head, that's the top of the head, all the way at the top. Now, start in here, maybe for the beginning, use a block. That's as well really handy. Having it like this, and then just placing the back of the head down and the crown of the head on the ground. So here, yes. Holding it, slide the head down, and then from here just practice lifting a little bit the knees off the ground, and maybe walk it in a little bit. Again, if you're first, first, first time doing this, hold just the block like this. You can even have it a little bit lower. Just lift the hips up, let the head freely hit, and working here, push the floor away, push the floor away. And notice that often we go back in here, push forward, forward, forward. So hug the front floating ribs in towards the back body, and keep the head relaxed and try to make sure that you can actually hold this kind of pincha mayurasana position without taking your legs all the way up and without putting even the head down, that you can actually hold this position comfortably for a full minute, if not two. Then you know that you have enough arm strength required to protect your cervical and to approach the full head stand. Moving into the next. Now, once you've got this part first going, with the strength that you have, with the head hanging, that you can hold it here comfortably. Maybe even try to play with float one leg up. Hold it for a few deep inhales and exhales, and then switch to the opposite, few deep inhales and exhales, which puts more load into your arms. Release it down and place the knees down and take a little break. You wanna make it a tiny bit more challenging and more heat on the arms. You can use a chair or a wall that is behind you. And do the same thing, don't put the head down yet. Just keep the gaze down, press, maybe float one foot up, then the other. Now from here, the goal is you're trying to get your booty, the hips over the shoulders. So you actually see how much weight you have to be there before you even put the head down. Keep it off the ground. Just push the floor, push. So don't sink. See what I'm doing? Push, rise up, push, 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 push. And even here you can practice lifting one leg at the time. It's basically Fincha Mayurasana forearm balance. But for a safe headstand, you really want to make sure that the arms are strong enough. Now, another approach, if you want to practice coming up, using the back in here, press the crown of the head down. The back of the head will touch the block. The back of the head will be pushed into the block. Lift up, walk it in. Now, often what happens, we try to kick up. We try to kick up and we fall out of balance. So what I'm going to ask you to do, just squeeze one knee in towards the chest. Don't kick up, rather scoop the knee in, 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 and keep hugging it in until the opposite leg floats up. So then alternate squeeze. This one, squeeze, 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 till the left one comes down. And practice doing that for a few rounds. So really from the get-go, work on using your core and the abs 
to flow it up rather than just kicking up. Because often the kicking, that's where the injuries happen. We're here, we try to do like all the crazy variations of trying to come up. Don't do that. Slow it down. You need to walk your feet up the wall. So maybe use the block in here. And maybe use two blocks in here. And we'll see why. So now, as you start, elbows down. Interlease the fingers together. Place the crown of the head down. Lift the hips up. Hug the front floating ribs towards the back body, then maybe step it up. And then from here, it's gonna be a little bit easier to practice floating up, and then switch. And it gets easier then to try to practice with both legs, going up and down. And try a couple of different options in here now if you want to use the wall for that you would need probably three blocks and you want to stack them like this next to one another and then one more on top in here in order to push the thoracic spine further in and that usually comes really handy when you interlace the fingers you place them a tiny bit in towards the hole you place the crown of the head down now as you start to lift the hips up the third block will push into the terrace. I'm going to demonstrate it using only two, but you would need three of them in order to do it properly. So, here and here. Now, the thing is I have a stable and a strong headstand, so actually I can do it without using three. You're doing it for the first time. Be careful, and again, uh, this is not going to work so well. Imagine that you have a wall in here. You want to make sure that you have a wall behind you for safety and as well so you can firmly push into it in order to rise up. I don't want to move right now, so we'll do it right here. So let's say you have two blocks on an angle or even like this next to the wall, as long as the wall is here, so pushing into it will not move. Interlace the fingers under, place the crown of the head down, lift the hips up, walk it in, walk it in, walk it in, walk it in, walk it in. Do you see what's happening? So the back of the thoracic is touching the block. Push into the block. So from here, go back, push into the block. Push, push, push into the block so much and that will allow you to float maybe one leg, then the opposite, and slowly rising all the way up. Again, you can always rest your feet onto the wall. That's another little approach to get into a headstand using the wall. Again, you can walk your feet up the wall, or you can use the wall as a support behind you so you don't go all the way around. And then the final variation that I did, which some teachers don't teach but it comes really handy once you start practicing fourth and fifth series with a lot of arm balances and work so from here once you're in the headstand you want to float the head off the ground I don't know how much that was visible with my dog earlier we'll just do that one right now You're basically trying to create a straight line, still gazing at the navel in here. And bring the head back down. And slowly feet, knees, and slowly down into your child's foot before we move on. And that's basically headstand shirshasana. <laughs> <laughs>